and you see me, you see me on LinkedIn. I'm very, very active on LinkedIn. Okay, thank you. By the way, we'll start. If you don't mind, can I play that video? If you don't mind. Please go ahead. All right. I'm going to stop sharing and I'll share the video quickly. You sex is baby. One minute, please. Pardon me. Okay, can you see this video? Can you see my screen again? Yeah, you just had a screen. Yes, we can see it there. This is going to inform our discussion. Just play for <laughs> By the way, <laughs> please very quickly, I want to ask us a question. That video that I play, yeah, the host has disabled me again. Please enable me so that I can share my screen. Why they're trying to, okay, thank you. Um, can somebody, I believe we saw the video. Do you want me to play the video again? Hello? Hello? Response, please. Please, I want this webinar just to be engaged. Yeah, can we all see my screen? I uh, just started sharing. Okay, you can. Yes, we can. Fantastic. So I just finished playing a video. And I want to ask us a question. Can we just talk to that video? What do you think you took out of that video? What did you take out of the video? Is there any response? If there is none, just tell me to go on. Please enable the participant to talk, please. If there is um, a function that allows them to talk. You can, you can signify by show of hands, um, sound check, I believe you can hear me. Sound check, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. Fantastic. So, um, so I guess. Hello. Okay, go on. Hello, we can hear you, uh, Rukayat. Good evening. Okay. Good evening, sir. Um, I think there is a rat trap and a bread was used as a bait. And the bait was actually calling the rats to come and feed on it. But eventually, the rat was trapped by the, I don't know. <laughs> Fantastic. I think you give it a shot. Yes, that was what was in the video. Do we have any other person? Okay, 
Let me just tell you, marketing is what we've just seen. If there is no other thing we'll do today, that is marketing. You have a cheese that is calling a mouse. Come take me, come take me, come take me, come take me. Mind you, the mouse itself is also a prey to the owner of the house. But look at what the owner of the house did. The mouse is constituting a nuisance in the house. But the owner of the house needs to get the mouse. So the mouse in itself becomes, I will tell you very straight, becomes the middleman, the middleman in between the disturbance and the owner of the house. What I was saying, the owner of the house needs to do something to get the mouse out to take that bait. And that is the job of marketing. What marketing does is to actually drive push to a product, drive push to a service. So marketing in itself, it's not entirely independent. It requires some elements to make it work. So we'll now go to the whole discussion. So we have a bit. The bit is positioned at the point that it is consumable. So it is well activated. So we'll still talk about that off record, there is what we call activation on the marketing. It is well positioned. And it appealed to the mouse. Are you seeing the way it's going? That means it was acceptable to that mouse. It was well activated, positioned very well. It was acceptable to the mouse. And that was why the mouse actually fell for the bait. And you see, the mouse was able to beat the trap, but the mouse did not beat the what? The stick, the broom. And that is how it is. Fantastic. Uh, what are we going to learn in this webinar? Very quickly, this webinar is going to give us an understanding, an understanding of how markets, marketing connects to food product development. Mind you, I have actually, we're not talking textbooks here. We're talking experiences. And I want to tell you, and someone who have worked in the food industries, and I have worked in an environment where we manage perishable and non-perishable goods. And these goods must go to trade. You understand? And for us to get them to the trade, there are so many things we need to do. And what you need to do is the marketing execution. And it is all about how marketing can help us drive growth in our businesses. And therefore, it will help us to create a workable plan to be competitive in trade. We have to, to be able to position our product for success the way the cheese was positioned for the mouse and to help us to design simple innovation gate processes. We'll get to that point, simple innovation gate processes. Now, what is food preneurship? I took time, and mind you, this is not in any textbook. I took time myself to look at food, entrepreneurship, and I can tell you with the recent advances into nutraceutical, into functional food, um, I think this definition is still limited. But we're limiting it to the poor view that we think we can contend with. And if we need to talk about functional food, nutraceuticals, you understand, um, food fortification will still go in there. How does marketing relate to those areas. 
So food entrepreneurship covers basic knowledge that is needed to develop a food product, to run a restaurant or food retail business, and other miscellaneous food related endeavors from the initial idea through the early growth stage. If I ask any one of you, what is food entrepreneurship? You know that food is food. Entrepreneurship is the ability to do business and everything come together, fused together is the idea, the knowledge to be able to develop a food that will be acceptable to the market, that will be legally safe. When I say legally safe, the issue of litigation is becoming a serious one in Nigeria. And as food processors, we need to be very careful. And we're going to talk about it in marketing too. There is what we call anti-competition and it's very critical. So what are our keywords? Our keywords are food, entrepreneur, product, retail business, and marketing. Mind you, we're talking about food marketing. Marketing as it relates to food. Now, look at this simple, apologies. Look at this simple slide. This is a food system. Before we do anything, we need to understand the procedure of food production and what happens from that point. When you are on the farm, when you get, when you source your raw materials from the farm gate, marketing has not started. But immediately, you take that product out of the farm gate via the truck or via rail, via road, rail, water, air. Marketing starts. Tell you why. The process of moving that product from one point to the other is a subset of marketing, which we call distribution or logistics. And you will see the dots, the areas covered within this box at that point where marketing happens. Marketing does not happen when you are producing in the, in the, in the factory, and it does not happen after the food gets into the hand of the consumer. Marketing happens within the chain that is in this box, this annotated box. And we'll get to that point. So a food marketing is defined as the activities that takes place within the food system. Immediately after the farm gate and before the consumer consume the product. So food marketing, after the farm gate, you take it via whatever means of logistics into your warehouse and you start processing. The point from where you take it after the farm gate to the warehouse is a, is a first level of marketing experience. While you are processing the product, you must have identified the needs. There is a problem or there is a need. It could be a nutritional need. It could be a fortification need. It could be value need, value add need, to the point of wholesaling, retailing, servicing the food, either in the restaurant or in the retail chain. When this whole thing happens, immediately after the farm gate and before consumption, Everything that happens within this annotated box is marketing. So we're talking about transportation, we're talking about processing, we're talking about storage, we're talking about shipping into warehouse, into shop right, into Adidas, into Ebano. We're talking about shipping and supplying the women 
in um, in the open market, Ojuwoye market, uh, Ojaoba market, um, Sangros market, whatever market you can think of, everything that happens within that space, within the space of shipping into the warehouse, processing, then moving out to the wholesaler, retailer, or to the restaurant or the malls, before it is consumed, all those process is marketing. If you have questions, please permit quickly, feel free to interject. So marketing system performs the services necessary to move food from the producer to the consumer. Chicken, huh? So all the functions necessary, we've talked about that. And now we need to talk about trade strategies. I'm not going to put anybody in suspense. You see on the left hand, we have sales. On the right hand, we have marketing. Um, I believe in food processing, they must also have taught us some things around sales marketing. Can somebody help us with what sales is? This is an interactive session, please. What do you think sales is? Anybody can help. Hello? Hello, can I ask? Please feel free, feel free, please. Okay, sales is putting a product or services out for, uh, for the benefit of somebody and the person will have to pay price for it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Do we have any other opinion? Thank you, Madam Alicia. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Any other person? Okay, can we talk about marketing? Madam Alicia has given us some insights around sales. Marketing. The, the three slides that we've, we've talked about really threw some lights around marketing. Now, let me tell you a quick difference. There can be no sales without marketing. And there can be no marketing without sales. The function of sales is to take products out of the processing facility into the shops, into the malls, into the retail chain, into the restaurant. The job of marketing is to ensure that it is top of mind of the consumers who need the product. It is top of mind of the consumers who do what need the product. So sales pushes the product out to the trade. And when the product is out of the trade, they fold their hands. I'm not saying they fold their hands, but the job of sales is done. So now take the product off the shelf. It needs some form of catalytic support. I believe you know what catalyst is. Catalyst aids the rate of, 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 of reaction. So, Sales has put the products in, in the shelves. They have deployed the products across the trade. What does marketing do? Marketing is going to now sensitize the people who need the product and people who don't need the product. Call it to their attention, either by print, either by social media, either by TV, either by out of home. We're going to talk about that too. But that is what marketing does. So sales is not complete with market, without marketing, and marketing cannot be complete without sales. Marketing does not take the product into the shelf. It is sales that takes the product into the shelf. But sales will not be successful if marketing does not drive movement of believability, movement of choice action, and create top of mind. We are going to talk about top of mind as time goes on. Then let's look at why product fails. I'll give you instances. And I think I need to throw this to us. 
We must have seen some products in trade and we stop seeing them again. Can we just give examples of those products? Hello? Hi. Yeah. Can we give examples of products that we have seen in trade and we're, we're not seeing them anymore? How many of us know Crush? Pamalat. What? Pamalat. Pamalat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It, Pamalat. Yes. Fantastic. Yes, Pamalat must be a milk drink, Abby, in um in a, in a carton. Uh, it was like a, a form of Tetra Pak. Those days, it, yeah. that was product of early like 80s. Mix, oh, it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, UHT product in a Tetra Pak. It's a milk it's product. A milk it's a milk product in a tetra pack. Yeah. Beautiful. One, have you heard of Crush? Crush is a carbonated soft drink. Yes, I remember it. It's no more. Yeah. It's no yes, more. I remember. Yeah. Crush. Have you had have you heard of ginger ale? Yes, ginger ale. Yes. Then you. Uh, have you heard of uh, yeah let's start thinking let's start thinking of products Le we can restrict it to food i'm trying to restrict it to food products goody goody okay goody goody yeah and we talk yeah, about nico. Some other ones? nico okay yes. what do you nico. say Nico, Planta, Planta Madri. Planta Madri. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, now, do you know Planta is still in trade? Is very much in trade. Planta Madri is very much in trade. But let's talk about the ones that you've mentioned. I know Wally mentioned Pamalat. I mentioned Crush. Someone mentioned. Uh, I think Ginger Hill. Some people mentioned uh, why. Bandi, let bazooka. us ask ourselves why Bazooka Joe was chewing gum. Am I right? Yes. Of yes, those yes. Days. yes. Sandy Gulana was a soft drink by yes. the old yes. Limka Limka Company. Yes. Am I yes. right? Africola and Co. Okay, now the question is this, why do those products fail? Products will always fail when there is no connection, when there is no clear question and answer as to why the product is being formulated. I believe the bulk of us that are here are food entrepreneurs. And what we do is, we sit down and say, I want to produce this product. I can tell you when pure water came, everybody started producing pure water in searching. When powdered um, chocolate, powdered chocolate drink, Wale came out, everybody was producing powdered chocolate. Do you know what they do? They get sugar, they get milk, they get cocoa powder, they put it in the grinder, they start to meal for us after milling. They allow it to cool down the package. People saw that there was need. They did, did, did not move beyond that. And we'll take it back to a product like Crush. Crush was the number one orange drink in the early 80s to the mid 80s and in the 70s. Am I right? For those of us who saw Crush. Yes. Who yes. Yes. Crush was number yes, one. Yes, you are right. Why did Crush fail? Crush failed because there was no clear differentiation when the likes of Fanta Orange came to play. 
we're coming to that. So majority of products always fail because the producer or the processor refused to do an in-depth need analysis. You know that there must be a need for a product before you produce the product. Do you agree with me? Yes. We are in the, thank God we are in a world of iteration. Have a, a reason, the need to produce a product, which we call problem identification. You should not go to processing, except you want to waste Solve your problem. money. You must have that mentality of problem solving before you go into any business. And that is one key component of marketing. So product fail because the people who go into that production do not do or invest in research. Apart from that, I've given you an example around pure water production in the 80s. We got so many water. People without education, without even knowing why they need to do it, went into pure water production. And when they produce the package, after two days, you start seeing greenish like algae and plant two materials in the water. And some of us were drinking it that time. <laughs> you understand? People like Wale was drinking it. No education towards how to get the best in terms of quality. I recall then there was nothing like NAVDA. We only have a food control unit then in under the Ministry of Agri. Yeah. Not until people started falling ill. Not until the hospital started having customers. When you are going to launch or produce a product, you must be able to invest in testing and validation. And that is why we, that is where the idea of organoleptic analysis, quality and sensory evaluation, quality assurance comes into play. A small scale business should be able to invest in a small scale testing and validation section. And that is why organizations that regulate quality like NAVDAC in Nigeria, like SON in Nigeria, will first ask you, take me to your lab. Am I right? Very right. Aside that, you cannot just produce the product and now sit down. You must invest in promotion. Promotion is ensuring that the food gets, the product, sorry, gets, food product gets into the outlet where it will be taken off. Promotion is ensuring that the right value in terms of pricing is actually ascribed to the product. And you have to take the product to the right channel. I bet you, if you take Shoko, Shoko Nat to Victoria Island, it will sit on the shelf till Jesus comes. But if you take it to Agege, Abulega, Songo, Agbado, Jai, you are seeing people that will buy it. Let me just leave that. If you take a Sache Chelsea to Victoria Island, you put it on the shelf, nobody will buy it. But if you take a bottle Chelsea, bottle squadron, and you put it on the shelf in Victoria Island, people will pick it. Why? There is what we call differentiation. Now, promotion is there, but there is also market differentiation. You don't take what is meant for a tier of market to another tier of market where it will not be accepted. So brand and product, we always fail 
if the producer or the processor refuse to make the right connection between the consumer and the product. There must be connection. You can't take sachet water to Victoria Island and put it on the shelf. But if you take sachet water to Juo market, to San Gros, people will buy it on the go. So why are you taking it into ShopRite? Am I making sense? Yes. That is the differentiation around getting your product into the... And I will tell you, all of these are all about marketing. Marketing. Now, marketing talks about, we're now going to start. For marketing to happen, I want to challenge you as food premiums, food entrepreneurs. You cannot just go into your lab or into your processing room and process a product and put it in your warehouse and be waiting for people to come. We've talked about that. The very first thing you need to know is this, opportunity identification. I'll be giving you examples. Before now, we always have peak milk in what? In 450 grams, team. In um, 100, I think that is a 50 gram team, 50 mil team. And it got to a point, is getting out of the reach of the common man. Cowbell came to the rescue. Do you all remember? Cowbell came with a sachet. It's not that there is no meat. And that was the major killing and killer point for Pamalat. Wale, I've just answered your question as to why Pamela died. Pamela was focusing on the same market that Mr. Peak Milk had already settled down to hit the lion's share and has money to do trade support. Then when Cowbell came in, Cowbell came in with Sachin, 50 grand, 10 era. And we all bought into it. It shut up their volume. It shut up their price. It increases their brand strength. And that was why. And it forced a player like Peak Milk, that's where Wamco, West African Milk, am I right? To so go back to the drawing board and do their own searching. That is opportunity identification. Some people identify that opportunity that there are people who could not buy 50 grams at 100 naira at that time. And they came with just 20 grams, 10 grams at 10 naira. What do you want? If it's just to put milk in my tea and I gulp it and I go, that was the mentality. That was the first thing. A good processor or food premium must be able to identify opportunity within a specified market. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it again, within a specified market. After that, design and develop that solution. Opportunity identification is all about identifying the need, identifying problems, and taking idea, taking cue from it, and developing a solution to that problem. And development of a solution to that problem involves design and development. Design and development is not always in the purview of a food processor. But I can tell you a good quality analyst will be able to design and develop products that will stand the test of time if the right investigation is done during opportunity identification. After the product might have been designed and developed, you don't take the product to trade. What you need to do is you subject the product to what? Test. This is purely marketing process. 
This is what we call the four gates. There is a sixth gate to innovation, which is done by the big multinational. But this is four gates. Identify the opportunity in the trade, design and develop your product. We are talking marketing here. This is where marketing starts. When your product leaves the farm gate into your warehouse, that means you have, an, you have a problem to solve and you want to provide a solution to the problem. That is where marketing starts. Design and development comes into play. How do you design? You design your products in terms of formulation, how many carbohydrates, how many grams of protein, how many grams of fat, how, how, what um, state will it be? Will it be powdered form? Will it be solid? Will it be semi-solid? And all of those things. How do I package it? How do I preserve it? Is it going to be um, room temperature preservation or is, must it be put in the freezer at all time or must it be put within a temperature of zero to four degrees? which is the normal free temperature. After this, you now subject to testing. As a food scientist, your, your, uh, your, your responsibility is to ensure you churn out a quality product so that you don't start facing litigation at the end of the day. Then you talk about the last one, which is product introduction and launching. Let me quickly take you back to testing. Testing is not only organoleptic assay. Testing involves quality check, organoleptic check, then sampling check. Sampling is taking the product to, the, to some selected people, telling them to look at it, telling them to taste it, telling them to sample it and give you feedback. If there is need for you to do an improvement, you do the improvement. If there is need for you, to take some elements out, you take, so take those elements out. Any question at this point? At the end of this introduction and launch, you have your product. Any question at this point? Should I fire on? Hello, my check. Hello. Continue. Can you, on? Continue. you can continue. On. We are enjoying it. Thank it's you. interesting. The message, the teaching is interesting. Thank you. Now, after this, you know, we've talked about product development plan. You now see we now have marketing plan. You already have your product. You've done all the necessary tests. You've done all the necessary validity analysis. You've, not, you've done all the necessary shelf life analysis. You've taken it to the regulatory body. They've certified it is good. And they say, fine, you can fire on then the second stage of marketing comes to play. And you now, start, you now have to start to ask yourself questions. You know, you can't go into any business without a business plan. You can't go into a business without having a clear vision, a clear mission, a set goal and objective. I don't want to teach that in this class. I don't want us to, because if we start that, it's going to take us some 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 hours, but for a business to be alive, you must have a clear reason, which I call the mission object, the mission of of the business. Then you have a vision. Then you have your goals. What are your goals? What are the short term goals? What are the long term goals? Then you now have your objective. What is the objective of your doing this product? You start with the universal. What is the objective of doing this business? Then you now have product line. What's the objective of doing this product? Is this product designed to provide nutritional um, improvements is to children or to people who do not have <laughs> plenty money to invest in um, nutraceuticals, functional products, you understand. So you need to ask yourself, what is my business? Why am I in this business? Am I in the business for charity? No, there are some people who do not for profit and we have them in Nigeria, we've been supporting them. Gain is one of them. 
TechnoServe is one of them. We now ask ourselves, who are our stakeholders? Here we need to talk about who our stakeholders are. We have the internal stakeholders and the external stakeholders. The internal stakeholders, now, you are within your organization. You are the CEO, but you are as the CEO, you don't have the final say because you have board of directors. You cannot take a unilateral decision until you meet with the board of directors. And if it is a one man company, you have to ask yourself this question. You become stakeholder to yourself. Why am I into it? If I produce this product, will I be making gain if I do this? To what extent will my commercial planning be? How do I design my commercial presentation? Your external stakeholders are the regulatory bodies. They are the consumers you are going to sell to. They are your competitors. They are the government. We are going to get there. And in your context, you know, you know, before you start a business, we talk about research. We said product fail because people don't do research. Businesses fail because we don't do research too. I don't want to go into business development. I want to restrict it to marketing development. What, what are the realities of the business you are doing in your context? And I'll challenge each and every one of you now. We have people who are entrepreneurs who have already been in business for seven years. Can you give me an idea of the business environment seven years ago and what we have now? Please, do we have anybody who can just talk us through? We'll be taking real life scenario while we're going on. Please, very quickly. Do we? Okay, let me quickly help us. Seven years ago, there was no COVID. But there was Boko Haram. Seven years ago, there was no kidnapping. But now, when you are moving your product on the road, is either you double insure or you keep your eyes wide open. For some of us, who runs this business solely? Before now, we can drive at night between Lagos and Oren. But now we dare not do it. Those are realities, real life scenario. Five, six years ago, the number of people who can put five naira down to buy a sachet of milk is far, far more than the number of people who can put 25 naira or 50 naira down. I think it's 50 naira now. Carbell is 50 naira now. 50 naira down, down to buy that same sachet it's of milk. It's now 70 naira, 80 naira, depending on where you are buying. Thank you. And let me also chalk you. Seven years ago, the imperial leather and locks that you were buying, and uh, Tetmosol and Deto that you were buying seven years ago was three times the one you are buying now. Do you know that? that have you, how many of us have used Deto <laughs> five, six years ago and Deto today? Yes. That is the reality that comes with business. And every day, the reality poses itself at us, and we have to sit down and re strategize. So you ask yourself, what are the business realities in your context? If you want to go into powder, into package Gary, what are the realities of package Gary? What does people want? Do they want the Gary with, with granite? Do they want the Gary sour? Do they want the Gary with sugar so that you can have a combo? You know, there is what we call combo. Yes. Do they want Gary inside corn and you pack it with sugar and the granite? Those are the realities. How do you add value?
so that you can be a force to reckon with in the market. That is why what it means by setting context. Now, you need to also now understand how, my, how marketing fits with your business strategy. We have some people, they don't even do marketing at all. What they do because they know that within that environment, if they do Gary and package it, the Yabosa will come and buy. They don't need to do market. But mind you, they forgot that they always call the Yabosa, Yabosa, Gary is radio. Fresh Gary is available. What is that? Is that not marketing? It's a word of mouth marketing. So how does marketing fit into our corporate and business strategy? I want to give you people that assignment today. Go back, sit down, look at the context of your business. What is my business for? Is it for charity? Who are those people that I'm contending with? Contending is not fighting. People that help me and people that I help. People that challenge me and people that I'm going to challenge. How does marketing fit? We've told us what marketing means. Marketing is actually the processes that happen after you take and your farm gate. farm gate and before it is consumed by the country. So you now need to now look at how marketing fits into your mission and strategic business tools. Any question, please? Can I go on? Yes, go on, sir. Please, I want I want us to be to be to create an interactive session here, um, and I'll tell you, it's always good when you give feedback, when you interject, it's the best. This is not a lecture. We are having a webinar where we exchange ideas. I don't know it all. I said I'm open. Also, you understand to learn it. Yeah, go on. Now, go on. Marketing environment. Oh, you see, okay. uh, no, when, you, when you oh, talk about marketing environment, yes. I'll take us, let me take us from environmental factors that affect businesses. And that is what we call marketing concerns environmental factors that affect businesses. I'll quickly talk about PESTEL. We use PESTEL in, during, in MBA, for those of you who have done MBA in management, for those of you who are, so who are When you look at PESTEL, PESTEL is one of the two that businesses use to determine entry or entry. no entry. No, no entry. Or no go. Are you with me? But um, it's not limited to businesses yeah, that do that It's also important for small-scale businesses, medium-sized businesses, food processors, because it will help them. And let us start and look to look at it. First, of all, political influence. Lately, NAVDAC has said, or government has said, they are going to stop all product in searching, in politin. Are you all aware? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, we are hearing. Yes, we are hearing you, we are aware. You are aware? Yeah, yes. That is one environmental factor. For some of us who have been doing polypropylene, polyethylene packaging, is a challenge. Am I right? Then yes, what does please. that tell us? We need to start thinking about what? You know, other means. <laughs> alternatives. What are the opportunities and alternatives that comes into play? Let's go to economical. I can bet each and every one of you the amount of money you used to buy raw material last year is not what you used to buy raw material today. Let us even forget last year. Before. Yeah, double. Before petrol increase, no, before petrol scarcity. And now petrol is being sold in Abuja for about 400, between 250 and 400 on the road. And if you want to go and buy for 165, you have to queue for six, three, four hours. And if you are not careful, someone will bash your car 
and you end up spending 60, 70,000 to fix your car. So why don't I go to the guys on the road and buy 450? Now, if I want to distribute products and the products, you know very well, you must not disappoint your customers. And yes. the need for you to ensure that the product gets to them quickly, what will you do? You have to go that route. Am I right? And when yes. you go that route, you are not going to make a loss. You have to do what? Spread the margin over the cost of the products that you are going to, to supply. Am I right? Yes. Now, there is an economical yes. implication. Another economical implication I will tell you very quickly. Forex. Most of us, or some of us, depend on fluctuation of the dollars to make decisions. I can tell you. Yes. Of course, we want to import products. Also, of course, we want to go and buy products from our suppliers. And they'll tell you, dollar has increased. What do you do? This time, 2015, dollar was 198 naira. By 2016, by December 2015, there was a spike. 2016, we started having problems. So economical impact is not limited. It affects marketing of products. And when you want to save costs, as a businessman, you are looking for the best way to save costs because the, 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 the responsibility of a businessman is to make money. Yes. Why? Why ensuring satisfaction on the side of the people that is taking the customer or our services or goods? Yes. So for you to save costs, what do you do? Is either you start optimizing your product, you start reducing some small, small things that you believe the customers will not want to see. As a marketer, let me quickly tell you, some of us, you make packages and the packages we have plenty colors like this. Do you know each color on this thing is money? Yes. What, yes. What a good businessman will do is say, let me just use one color. If I want to use blue, let me use blue. You know that economical impact, economical influence made you to take that decision. No, yes. it's going to affect the aesthetics of your package. But you need to save costs and you need to ensure that your consumers and your customers don't move away from your product to another product. Am I making sense? Yes. yes. We look at the social factor. Social factor, I will quickly tell you. Social factor has to do with one, demography. It has to do with belief of people. You cannot take pig to Kano and say you are selling pig in Kano, you are looking for trouble. You cannot move beer by a truck in the open and say you are driving through Kano. Isuwa, but what's the name of those guys? They will impound your truck and destroy the product. So we need to also consider the social influence, how society affects our product. In, no, influence, don't let me say affect. Influence our yeah, product yeah. is key. How does the society influence your product? You know, we're talking about you selling seche in Victoria Island, seche milk in Victoria Island, or you put gari yeah, in seche. Who will buy from you? Maybe the megads will buy from you. Yes. But you know, you cannot take a product that is segmented for another society or social strata to a different social strata. Yeah. You can supply alcohol to children below the ages of 18. Mm -hmm. You are in trouble. So these are the things that needs to come into play. The next one is the technological impact. Technology. Now, we have technology that can mass produce. Why some of us are still doing batch production? Just give me, let me be using scoop to be filling. We have moved beyond that. 
And I can tell you there was a time when the, like, I'll use the pure water as a case study too. At the time when the owner of the pure water factory, we just used to just put the nylon, where it's almost full, just stop and seal it with. But now you have a machine that fill, seal, port, and pack. Automation. Thank you. You have what you called an automated line that can give you 2,000 times the quantity that you do manually. Yeah. Educational impact too also is another case. Let me quickly talk about that. You don't over advertise when your consumer base are not educated. Hmm. Please. Do not over lecture when your consumer base are not educated. Or you don't sell science to an accountant. Am I making sense there? Yes. You don't sell science to an accountant. It's going to be a jargon. Why don't you keep it simple and simple. short? Short. So if you are going into the market, into a market, you need to look at the level of awareness of the people. Study, yeah. The level of awareness. How aware yeah. are they? Are they the area boys type? Who don't care? Just give me anything, I go. Or you think you just package you and take it to Victoria Island and say, Victoria Island, come and take. I'm trying to make it clear case. The final one is the legal implication. I'm not talking to Pestel on the basis of business administration, business management. I'm talking to it on the basis of business, a business in itself, doing processing. If you want to start a business or you are doing a business or you want to launch a product, is not starting a business, launch a product. The final one is the legal, legal aspect. You cannot produce water without NAFDAQ approval. You cannot produce juice without NAFDAQ approval. If you try it, they are going to deal with you. Currently now, social media is not going to even help any of us that makes mistake now. Just let them find a pin in your product. <laughs> you know the number of people that will see it. The social media is not going to help anybody. And now we are becoming legally aware in Nigeria. Recently, Johnson & Johnson was sued in the United States to pay. Only God knows how, how they are going to settle that case. Over 200 million US dollars to some people they don't know who have used their product. And that means lawyers are going to eat. And we're getting to that point in Nigeria also where people are becoming aware of their rights. And I'll give you an example. If NEPA messes up now, there is electric regulatory agency, am I right? That, that takes charge of that. And they call NEPA to order. Just do something. Let a NEPA official mess up. And you tell them you are going to electric regulatory, Nigerian electric regulatory, any ROC, they will start to beg you. Why? Because they know there is going to be sanction. Now, I take you to, are we good with, with how I use PESTEL to, 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 to discuss product design, product development, and production process? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, understood. Fantastic. I quickly want to take you to product life cycle. All of us must have in science, done in microbiology or in yeah. food we must have gone through what we call lag phase, dog phase, stationary phase, decline phase. Decline phase. Yes, yeah. yes sir. Yes. So yes. we have yes. it in marketing too. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure majority of us won't be surprised. Yeah. To their face of goods. Yes. Now, product life cycle goes through phases. 
Yes. Black face yes. is when it just come out. We just launch it. That is the launch stage. Launch and stage. during that launch stage, you must support it with everything you need to support it with. You do sampling, you do promotion, you do offers. I'm not saying a small scale should do those things. I'm only saying at your level, you can find a better way. Sampling, you can do it. You can do um, discount offers at your level. Buy three for the price of two, of two. so that you can enjoy it. You can enjoy this product. You know very well that the margin you are losing in the short term, you are going to gain it over time if you are able to get those customers to come to you and stick by you. So during lag phase, which is the introductory phase, you get your new product out. People don't know the product. And when people don't know the product, you have to support the product, drive awareness, let your guys take the product out, show it to mama, boss on the, on the, that has a counter along the street, take it to the neighborhood shop, take it to the streets. Um, there are some outlets in the street now, they call themselves supermarkets. Eh? Take it to those places where you know that there are people that move into that place and let them give you a good space, a position where people can see your product first and they can ask questions about your product. That is the lag phase. So lag phase is, the product is just coming out of the product is just being better. And when you bet a product like a baby, you must support the baby, Abby, to grow, yes. feed the baby, breastfeed, buy bait. Log face is when you now have customers and the customers are able, you understand, to identify your product. Drive top of that means you have to drive top of mind for your product, identify the product, support it, and run with it. A point is coming in your log phase cycle that people will get tired of your product. We marketers, we know what to do at that point. And if, if you want to ask me what you do, do I will tell you. But if you don't want, let us go to the stationary phase. So Hello. the stationary phase, I Let's know what so we can do. Yes, tell us. <laughs> so, when, okay, thank you. When your product is enjoying accelerated growth in terms of volume, ah, today you sold 50, tomorrow it has come to 200, 500, 6,000, that you have to expand your production capacity. Am I right? At yes. a point, there are some people yeah. looking at you and saying, ah, that product is selling. I need to find out what that person is doing. And when they are able to unlock a solution to what you are doing, you understand what they will do is either key in or provide a superior quality, a superior value. At that point, you start seeing people diverting from your product, moving away from your product to another, to the same composite product, but that will give them more value, probably in terms of more price, value. probably in terms of quantity, probably in terms of quality. What do you do? If I were you, you understand. I will just try as much as possible, just do a brand extension. What do we call a brand extension? We have Suko some time ago. After Suko, the man came out. Um, while it was the name of the other product the man produced after Suko, chocolate drink. He came out with another chocolate drink because he discovered that people have got used to Suko and they are looking for alternative. The alternative, he just had to come up design an alternative. So what you do is either you design an alternative to that product and we call it a flanking brand. It's an extension to your product. So if you have Bosset sugar, you can as well do Shegun sugar. You know it's the same product, but you can now reduce the price of Shegun sugar so that while people are saying price of Bosset sugar is high, you understand, they will go for Shegun sugar. Now knowingly to them, Shegun sugar is your sugar. So brand extension is one. Number two, when your product is nearing the point where it is not growing in value again, you know, in quantity again, it's going to affect your revenue. That At that point, you need to sit down and rejig 
all of your components. You know that it is components that leads to price. Let me tell you what I mean by components. Nylon is a component. The printing on the nylon is a component. Are you getting me? The milling process is a component. Yes. The source of the product is a component. So if the source of your product is selling at a high price and you are saying because of quality, I want to, if you try another person and give, it gives you the same value at a lesser price, you know that you have done what? You have been able to reduce an impact. So it will not affect your quality. It will not affect your price. So what you need to do is ensuring that you, uh, you tick the product or you produce a flanking brand for the product. And that is where we come about. If you have plenty of this, you make it one. If you don't want to make it one, make a flank. So a flank is what we call a side product, a side brand. And I'll give you an example. Nigerian breweries, they have Gouda, they have Star, they have Goldberg. Are you, are you telling me it's not the same product that they are using to produce everything? I've worked in the breweries. I've seen what has happened. Then what they have done is either reduce the quantity of something of one or two of the inputs, are you getting me? So that it will reduce the value, the cost. Because each element of your product is built into what makes that product. So when your product is getting to the point that is a log phase, it's eating stationary phase. Start thinking of what you are doing. Because when the product eats stationary phase, and you now start strategizing, it will be late. At that log phase, you'll be doing your marketing research. And if I were you, I'll start designing a product that will be supporting that product so that I don't lose market share. I don't lose money. By the time it's each station, by the time my flagship product each stationary phase, the one that is coming on now, you understand, who pushing the effect of the stationary. By the way, you are, you'll be busy fine-tuning, redefining the quality of that product. And if you want to kill the product, you kill the product. How many of you have heard of Guinness African Special? Guinness African Special was a product of Guinness Nigeria at a point. But it is no more in the trade. It came to do the job it was asked to do, to support Guinness, because Guinness was losing its market share. And that means people were moving away from Guinness into some other star brand. And they brought it in. And I tell you, it brought people back into Guinness. Now they now have Guinness Smooth to also do the job. A time is coming, they will kill Guinness Smooth again. And they will say they are coming with extra smooth again. That is how you flank your product so that when it gets to stationary level, it will not die a natural death. I'll give you a product that died a natural death. App is a product. App Lagabia was one of the most versatile, sought after products in Nigeria. Where is it today? They are using the bottle to bottle already now. Yeah. Am I making sense? Yes, it yes, must not course. wait till our product gets to because when the product gets to stationary phase, it will be too late for us, you understand, to save the product. At the log phase is when we should start thinking because we already know that this product is climbing high. At a point, you yourself, you will not be able to even supply. And when the problem of supply start coming in, my dear brothers and sisters, there is Wahala. It is a red flag. The last phase is the decline phase. The decline phase is the phase at which the product dies a natural death. It's either it slows down in volume and it's not bringing in the same volume. So if you are a one brand company or one product company and your product has gone through this cycle, what happens? The company shuts down. And that was the problem with Palmalat because Palmalat came to target the high-end market with Tetra Pak. When Nigeria was not ready for Tetra Pak, that was the problem. When did Peak started producing Peak Mic in Tetra Pak? <laughs> I don't think it's up to four years. 
So we need to look at that, and that is yeah. what we all need. It's very important. To then we now talk, yeah, the other one is in cluster development. Cluster development talks about your delineation of market. Where do I sell my product? Am I selling them in the open market? Am I selling them in the you know, restaurant and the catering out and uh, catering houses? Am I selling them in ShopRite? Am I selling them in Adidi? Am I selling them in Ebano? Am I selling them in, in Oja Oyibo? Am I selling them in Ojuoye? So we need to identify where we take our products so, so that we can get more mileage because turnover is what matters. It is not your volume. When you produce so many products and you put it on the shelf and people are not going to where you put it, you are a failure. So we need to really sit down and understand where our products to be at the right time, at the right price. As, a mark, as part of marketing experience or marketing execution, when it comes to sales of food products, we need to also identify who our customers is. We've, we've talked about cultural, social, technological, and personal influences. We need to know what are their characteristics. Can you take Johnny Walker to boys under the tree, the to boys in uh, area boys? They don't know Johnny Walker, but if you take Chelsea to them, they know what Chelsea is. Because they believe Johnny Walker will not give them kick, but Chelsea will give them kick. So what do we give them kick? I'm sorry, I'm using that. You understand? So the same way, when you, when you take Ayola Gari to Mama Bosse, and you say Ayola Gari, this is 50 kg Ayola Gari is 1,500. Mama Bosse will tell you, this is 50 kg, I can get it for 300 somewhere. So we need to understand their characteristics. And yeah. understanding their characteristics help us to take decision and a productive decision at that. You understand? How does this influences, we need to know how the influences relate to our organization. We, know, we need to know who the players in our market are and what does the process of buying entail. Is your product the type of product you go to the supermarket buy? Is, or is it the type of product you can just pick on Mama Boss's counter? We need to look at this. It's important. Now, I take you to very quickly marketing insights. I just want to leave you with this for four, uh, four um, quadrants, this quadrant, sorry. If people cannot find your product, they can never buy your product. Never buy it. So that is availability. If people don't see it, they won't consider it. Consider it. If they don't understand what you are giving them, they will never buy it. And that is, we're talking about the guys, the area boys that you are taking uh, C-Rock to when only what they know is Chelsea. They will tell you they don't want it because they don't understand it. If they are not inspired by what you are giving them, and that has to do with your marketing execution. Your marketing execution has to create that inspiration. They will not bother to come and look for you. So please know that if they can't find your product, availability is key, they will not buy it. If they don't see your product, Availability is key, they won't consider it. If they don't understand your product, this is education, they won't buy it. And if they are not inspired by your product, that is activation. How do you activate your product? They will not bother to look for it. Make sense? Yes. Quickly, I want, yes. it's important we run with data. Data is key when you are doing marketing insight. Data is key when you are doing marketing research too. Um, I'm not going to bug you with what data is. Data are unstructured, unorganized, you understand, set of information that we get. How do we organize data? We have different ways of organize data, organizing data. SPSS, Excel is there, that's the most simplest form, or you can buy tools, data organizational tools. They are all there. Some of them are free online. Or what do you need to do with them? 
data are important. Data, sorry, is very important for you to make decisions, to make judgment, to drive execution, and to decide if you are going to scale up or scale down. Data is what will help you to know when your product is at the log phase, when your product is at the stationary phase, and when your product is not moving again. Data is what will tell you where your product ought to be, but they are not. Data is what will tell you where your sales challenges are. Data is what will tell you when to pull the plug. Somebody asked me, and I say, if you want to use data to forecast sales operations, a simple Excel will do. And a simple Excel is, what is my product? Who are my customers? How many are they taking every week, every month? Are they increasing in their purchase? Are they increasing the number of their purchases? If they are not increasing the number of their purchases, you can drill down to the particular customer who is not or who is dropping the ball. And when you identify that customer, it is easier for you to approach that customer. Am I making sense? And that customer will tell you what is or a problem is. And that customer's feedback will help you in making decision and in taking decision. Mind you, it is not all stories you hear that are genuine. But when you get those, when you get those feedback, put them in your data pool and look at, prioritize them and look at the ones that are genuine. I'll take you to market segmentations. Very quickly, market segment is Genus group, we've talked about market segment. A segment is your open market, or your Yibu, or your Yuwe. It's a homogeneous group of consisting of buyers who seek the same offering. You will see men on a Saturday sitting, most men, let me say most men, doing what? Sitting and staying glued to their TV, watching Premiership. Am I right? Mm. That's yes. the market segment. You want to agree with me? It's the market segment. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that is a market segment on its own. And I'll tell you, BPL is making huge amount of money, you understand, from what you are doing. How are they making huge amount of money? Every manufacturer wants to be present so that you will see it. You will see them. And when you see them, it clicks in your brain, it records in your brain, and you want to ask questions. What are they doing? What are they selling? And that takes you to why you see Lion Bet, Bet Niger, fighting every day to have a strip space on EPL. So it's a homogeneous group consisting of buyers who seek the same offering. The same way you go to Ojao Yimbo, that is where you see the TRD EF in the segment of the society going to. But when you go to Kingsway, you see the tier A and B, and probably C, visiting high-end supermarkets, ready to pay times four what Mama Monsura is paying for in the Yibo market. Theirs is also a market segment. So a market segmentation in, in itself is a science of sorting, of, of delineating where and where my yeah. customers are. Yeah. Hmm. And we have segmentation based on two scale. The first one is service level. Market segmentation based on service level is business to business and segmentation. Yes. That you of your product is supplied to another person who uses to make finished product. That's B to B market segmentation. That is on service level. There's another B to C. Your product is sold directly through the wares where wholesaler and the retailer and the distributor to the final consumer. That is B to C. But B2B is 
you have a product, the output of your product is the input for another person. And that input for another person is what they now turn into their own final product and sell. But at the same time, a B2B could be you producing your product, selling to ShopRite, I mean, supplying ShopRite, and ShopRite listing it on their shelf and supplying to the final consumer. That's another B2B. But a clear B2B is you selling to Mama Bosa in Ojo Yibu market, and Mama Bosa is selling to Mama Risi, Mama Shere, for that shebu. That's service level segmentation. Another segmentation of market is the one that has to do with people. And this is four types. We have the geographic segmentation. Where are those people located? Where do you find them? Somebody you find in Ojoalaba, don't bother to go and look for the person in Lekki. Why not take your product to Ojoalaba and meet the person in Ojoalaba? Someone you will find in Lekki, you don't take that, that the product, you don't, you don't take product of that person to another person you find in Agigi. So geographic market segmentation is there. We have demography. Demography has to, at every particular moment in time, has to do with the class of people. Male, female, boy, girl, age, children, age, adult. We have psychography which has to do with the mentality and the relation of the people. And we have behavioral. How do people react to your product? So there are four market segmentation, but the key market segmentation for people in our scale is who am I targeting, demography and the geography. If we are able to make and flood this very, I'm not saying we should not look at the psychographic and the behavioral. But for us at this small scale level or small and medium scale level, we need to ensure that we don't miss geographic market segmentation and demographic market segmentation. Because you can't sell a product that is meant for an adult with kids. You understand? And you can't sell a product that's meant for um, someone in the upscale environment. I'm sorry to someone that is trying to survive. Are you with me? That is. Yeah. Yes. So I take you. So I took time to break it down. I'm going to share this slide. It's for every one of us to look at so that we don't waste time. You see, geographic is region. The demography has to do with age. Psychography has to do with our personality. Behavior has to do with our status. You seen it? It has to do with status. So we need to understand it if we are trying to build a product and push the product to trade. We now, go to, we now come to targeting and positioning. How do you, as a business, Create good product positioning. Now, let me tell you what product positioning is. Product positioning is the ability to put your product in the right channel. You cannot be selling salt, you understand, and be playing where there is water. Do I make sense? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yes, yes yeah, sir. You made it, you're making a sense. You cannot be selling salt and be playing where there is water. Or you put it in the open, where it falls. I don't know what happens. We need to define our target market. I you see for marketing to be successful, you must define a target market. You must carve a niche for yourself. You need to identify who the other players are. I can tell you if you are producing pure water in your area, you might have like four or five competitors and all of you are selling to the same customers. Am I right? Then what do you need to win to create more awareness on top of mind? We'll talk about that. You need to determine the points of parity and point of differences. 
Where do I match with this person? What stand me out from this person? Where do I equate this person? Or where am I trying to struggle to meet up with this person? Or what stand me out? If you have what stands you out, flog what stand you out, you understand, to continue to grow your product and your market. Create a perceptual map. You see, I put my hands on my head. When you create a map of perception, you are seeing where you want to be, how you want to be, because you already understood where your market is. How do I get to these people? This is how I get to them. If you don't know, get people to go do the trade assessment. We call it market survey of how you will reach them. And that will now inform your brand matra. Toyota came up, good thinking, good product. What are they selling? Is it no car? Is Mercedes not a car? But perception and the matra of Mercedes is totally different from that of Toyota because Mercedes pride itself as what? I class. Toyota pride itself as everybody come inside. And when you go to Volvo, Volvo is saying, I am very, very much concerned about safety. Are you seeing it? They are carving a different niche for themselves but they are selling one product. Is it not because they are selling? One is telling you, I'll give you VIP treatment. One is telling you, you don't have to die. I'll give you safety. One is saying, see, is mass. I give you very good product for a very cheap price. That is what they are all saying. But what they are selling is one product, car. So you now need to tell yourself, what is my competitive advantage? Your mantra will determine what your competitive advantage is. Your competitive advantage is, I give quick delivery. Your competitive advantage would be, if you are forced to deliver, you are right on time, you don't disappoint. Your competitive advantage is, my product stay intact. It does not box. It does not leak. Your competitive advantage is I have for every carton one free unit. But I will tell you that is not always sustaining as a marketer. Now you now need to understand before you target and you position your product, where are you in the product life cycle? Are you in the log phase? Or are you in the stationary phase? Are you declining? It's important you do that every day when you are selecting strategy. So targeting and positioning has to do with how you present your business, your product portfolio, and create a differentiation with respect to, that, to the other competitors in trade. C. If it is pure water you are selling, you can create a differentiation. Your differentiation could be early to rise, early to supply. Your differentiation could be my product does not leak. Your differentiation should be I have um, SON certification. My Your differentiation could be when you take my product and you rub your hand on the label, it will not what mess your hand. You know, there are so many pure water we are drinking now. Before you even put them in your mouth, the, the ink has filled your lips already. So these are the differentiation you need to look at. I'm trying to use, to come down to our level, to look at product that, that we can do. But pardon me, if you have product, you can give me so that I can talk to the product. Now, to the business of the day. Marketing of food product. This is the business of the day. So I want you to take time to listen and understand this place. I 
deliberately don't want to play sly so that I don't create suspense. Marketing makes elements. Marketing makes elements are those elements that are required to drive successful product deployment and execution in trade. Chicken. And there are more than four, but the four keys that are important are promotion, product, place, and price. I want to speak to that. The first thing as a marketer or as a business person is to have product or service. So there are two things, product or service. Now, so your product or to your service, what are the features of your product? You need to be able to spell it out. Future. Can somebody give me a product that if we have a product that we are working on? I need a product. From national or from? I can't hear you. Please oh, come again. What? Is it a product? Is it a product from multinational or a product? Just I, don't need I don't need multinational. Somebody mentioned bread. Give me the name of the bread. Boma bread. Boma bread. Boma bread. What, what do you think make Boma bread different from um, ostrich bread or my uh, agege bread? Yes. Yes, uh, high quality. And high, quality is, uh, high quality is generic. We're talking about future. Okay, then uh, the future is the softness and uh, long shelf life. Softness, that's shelf life. Am I right? Yes. But somebody will tell you another feature is roommate free. Yes, yes, it could be, but you know. Uh, generically, breasts are supposed not to have bromate. So now that has Be, not been. Everybody hello? put it. This, hello? Yeah. Yes. Now, now, that, now that is not dissuading against it. In fact, if you want to register label now, they will tell you remove it. Because. Okay. Based on standard breasts, you know, have bromate. Why are you not saying bromate free? Are you insinuating that you, you oh, can't Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Makes sense. Okay, we're talking about softness and long shelf life. And I can tell you, if you put it side by side, I get bread. I get bread might not be able to tell you that they have long shelf life. Because, because what we know I get bread to be is that somebody somewhere just produce it, drive it to the market, and it is in the market, they will be packing it into line nylon. I don't know if it has changed over time, but the agege bread we were eating there when I was in agege, I grew up in agege too, was like that. So you have called out futures. Are you getting me? A future, one future, two futures. See, a product necessarily need not have many futures. But you can latch on the key features that resonate with that product. Long shelf life, that means put the bread for two weeks, nothing happened to the bread. The bread is soft. Put it there, it is there. So that is future. Thank you. Now, another thing is quality. What do you think will make Boma bread high quality to other breads? Like when you are hitting it, you decide to take two slices, but you, you don't know when you finish a, 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 a full loaf. Okay. So, and you know, when, when, you, when you first give it to a customer, so let me okay. see how your bread is. And then the response is always that, wow, I just uh, take uh, two slices, but I wouldn't know when I finish it. Where will I, where will I get okay. it? Where are you selling Beautiful. it? So. 
Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you flowing? Are we all flowing with that? You see, he's the one talking about it. And I want to yes. say something mm -hmm. again. When you talk about quality, you understand. You said quality, part of the quality is the bread is full. No airspace. There are some bread you just tear like this. You just see very deep gap. You start asking yourself, did they remove that gap? Did they remove bread from inside this thing? <laughs> You've not seen those breads. There are breads like that. So you start talking about, you talk about, uh, we've softness. talked about, uh, uh, we've talked about softness. We've talked about quality has to do with taste. Quality has to do with taste. When you eat it, you, you'll be satisfied. And he talked about it. Texture. It has, it has to do with texture, quality. Those are the things that you cannot physically see. Features are those things. You understand, you can physically and not physically, but quality are those innate things that you cannot physically see. But it gives you satisfaction. The next one is branding. For your product, to stand out, it must come out uniquely. It must be able to stand out from the crowd. So if they put 50, if they put all soft drink together, how will you recognize Pepsi? Tell me. We're still going to come to Boma. You discover that Pepsi have a red and a blue Blue. Semi yeah. like this. That is Pepsi. Logo. The logo. That is the logo. It. If you want to identify identify Coca-Cola without Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. what will you identify Coca-Cola with? The white ribbon. Yeah. The white ribbon. If you want to, if they tell you these are phones and you want to identify iPhone, how will you identify iPhone? Just turn the back. Yes or no? Yes. If you want to identify BlackBerry that time, what do you do? You turn the back. You see the BlackBerry logo. Yeah. So that is branding. Branding, you understand, stand you out of the pack. The same way, branding for Boma. Can we talk about branding for Boma, Boma Bread? Yes, sir. So Buma bread is a bread that comes from a a, a, a a business outfit that is well known for quality. So by the time you see the, the logo of the Buma bread, you see the name of the the, the business, like uh, the tasty fried chicken. You see it on it. So definitely by the time you see that tasty fried chicken, you know that this is coming from the, the, the business brand that is standing out with quality. So you see, we're coming out. Boma brand is leveraging the brand of the parent company. And the parent company is already known for quality. Yeah. So you see how we are tying it to one another. Now, from branding, it takes us to packaging. If I ask you again, packaging of Boma bread, how does it dif differ from the packaging of Agege bread? Thank you. There are two packaging for bread. We have BOPP and we have CCP. BOPP is a kind of uh, 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 packaging that will not allow uh, the transmission of steam. Yeah. yeah. But for the CCP, if you pack bread in CCP and you put it under the sun. The next thing you see is steamy. But for BOPP, you don't see that. So that is one. And the BOPP is, is stored there than CCP where you are handling it. Then another thing is that the shape, the geometric, geometric shape of the bread, we take cognizance of so that when you are stowing it on the chef, you stand out. Then the, the packaging, the packaging color comes in five different colors that have that aesthetic appeal and it stands out. Thank you. 
Oh, okay, fantastic. Thank you, Ms. Oluwase. I can tell you, let me just recap. Packaging, you use BOPP. Am I right? Yeah. All right, so, sir. So what makes your product packaging different is quality BOPP that you are using. You put it, quality, you are tying, you see, product in itself, you tie all the elements together. So how do you yeah. come about packaging? Packaging is serving two purposes. Prote yes. Protect your product. Protect your product and, and contain and your product. And stand your product out. Mm. Are you with me? Protection and standing the product stand out. Up. You understand? So BOPP happens to be the best bet which Agege bread does not have. And which makes you, you understand, to be a force to reckon with in the market. We're still talking about your product. Then we talk about services. Let me just quickly help you with your services. You have from the store into the retail outlet. You have salesmen that goes to place orders. Even if they don't go to place order, you have van salesmen that have what we call visiting schedule to all these locations. Today you go to this place. Tomorrow you go to this place. They have journey plans. And journey plans is hugely marketing because without that, providing the right services, providing the right services to support your product deployment into trade, the product will fail. So services is key. The services could be delivery services, logistic services, after sales services that you are giving for the bread. I'm not sure if you have warranty or you have, um, what's it called, uh, product return. Do you have product return um, provision? Oh, yes. yes, 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 yes. But uh, it's regulated. Oh, it's regulated. Yes, because uh, we teach our practices. So people, so there is a, is there, we have a regulated product return. Fantastic. So all of this, if you can have these six elements in your product, you are a winner. So start thinking about it. The same way Mr. Luashe had talked about it and is the same way we should all go with it. The next one is price. I'll quickly talk to price. If you don't have the right pricing for your product, is either people stop buying your product or you make a terrible loss. So pricing strategy is very critical in getting a quality product out. You understand. You are giving quality to customers at the right price. If you are giving it to them at a lower price, you are making a terrible loss. If you are giving it to them at a very high price, people will not patronize your product. You see the balance. So it's always good to provide that clear metric your pricing strategy must be based on well if we have an opportunity we can go to how to calculate product cost how to do not today how to do product a and p how to work out cost of goods sold to the point you get your margin and we're going to use one of your products from how you source it, the element that goes into the product, how much is your warehouse costing? You understand? Do you rent it? Is it your own? What is the level of depreciation on your machineries? We'll put all this into your cost element and we'll come with the pricing. If you happen to be uncompetitive, you are now have to go back and look at the raw materials, what you are sourcing, where you are sourcing them from, so that you can get the best value for it. Now, pricing, there must be clear discounting. See, when you say discount, discount is not to give people freebies. Discount is to support your execution to be a player to reckon with in, in the market. You give discounts to your wholesalers and to your distributors. You don't give discount to retailer, uh, to was you give discount to retailers, you don't give this discount to consumers. Why do you give discount? You give discounts to increase the number of your products that goes to trade. Are you with me? 
And you can also be competitive when you give trade terms. Trade terms is all about striking an agreement with your distributor or your retailer or wholesaler that I will give you this, but you have to pay me my money so, so, so time. So that you will have factored that, even if you are borrowing money from the bank, you will have factored that into the money you are borrowing from the bank. We call it trade or payment terms. All these elements comes to play to make you competitive and drive your product, your understanding the trade. The next one is this, in place. If you don't put your product in the right place, you are a failure. You are seeing I'm saying you are a failure. You cannot be a failure because you already uh, you have already done your market analysis, market, market analysis to know what and what you want. So we talk about the channels where they have to go, the market coverage. Assortment talks about what package size is. Is it 50 grams that should be here? Is it 100 grams? Is it 3 kg that should be here? That is the assortment. You need to look at the location. When your product is not supposed to be under the sun, don't put it under the sun. Are you with me? When your product is not supposed to be under the sun, don't put it under the sun. When your product is not supposed to be refrigerated, don't put it in the refrigerator. And you also, as a food processor, must be conversant with the means of transport because transportation is one of the easiest channel to transmit product infection. Transportation is one of the easiest channel to, 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 re, uh, to record product loss, product damages. So we need to be mindful of the means of transportation we use, the type of, the type of um, um, equipment we use to transport our product and the packaging that we use is very important. That is place. The last one is promotion. There are different ways of promoting your product. Sales promotion, you can go and meet your people one-on-one. -on -one. You can give them special sampling offer. Are you with me? You can, you can give them posters. Yes, it's part of sales promotion. Posters. Advertising is also part of advertising. Advertising could be on the radio, on the TV, on the social media platform. It could be word of mouth, which we call public relations. Word of mouth. Ooh, ah, mama, hey. Boma is the best bread. Oh. Boma bread is the best bread in town. I've tried it. You to try it. And that person try and it's the same thing. Oh, the next person, Boma bread is, is good. Try Boma. So that is how promotion comes into play. Then finally, you talk about direct marketing. Direct marketing is all about skipping all these channels of marketing and getting your product to the final person straight. It is expensive, but some technological company uses it. Dell uses direct marketing to supply their laptops in the US. But HP uses middle partners. They use um, distributors to supply in Nigeria. You see, you see how it is. This, if you have all these four elements of market mix in place and they are working together, if you pick only sales promotion at your level for promotion and you ensure that the ones for, for place, everyone is covered, pricing, everyone is covered, product, everyone is covered, and you pick only sales promotion at your level, you are good to go in your business. We're talking about how marketing affects our products. So we now talk finally on the integrated marketing communication. Integrated marketing communication is, you know, people leverage. I see so many people who sell stuffs on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, fine. But when you use an holistic communication to get your product into trade, holistic, then we talk of integrated marketing communication. We are using advertising, sales promotion, word of mouth, direct marketing, public relation, and personal selling. We are using, that is integrated market communication. Now, it is always encouraging.
to use everything. If you can lay hands on the three that you think is best for you, and you run with it, you discover that it's going to help. Now, where I come, when it comes to advertising, we're talking about advertising, we're now talking about digital channel, out of home, above the line and below the line. Digital channels are your Facebook, Twitter, da 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 da, da. Um, Spotify, Snapchat, whatever. Above the um, above the line is the radio and TV commercials. Out of home are your billboards, your lampposts that you put. When people drive by, they see it. We now have digital out of home. We had that thing we just show. It's always on, it's all on the on the express road in Lagos, most especially, where you have it flashing into your eyes as if you are watching TV. That's digital out of home. These are the new things that people are using, and that is what we call integrated marketing communication. Now, very quickly, this is going to be. a very important one for you. As a food entrepreneur, I will leave you with this. Before you start anything, marketing is what all that you have done from when you start processing till it gets to the final shelf and before they eat it. You need to ask specific questions about what your consumers do. You need to also have relevant information of what their issues are. A penetrating discovery, insight into why they want that element, that product. And you have to now ask yourself, if you don't do it, what is the implication? If you do it, what is the implication? After you have done that, then go ahead and implement. So what we're saying is you need to identify your problem. You need to define the needs or the problem. You need to ideate possible scenarios to actually ensure that you create solution for them. You also need to validate your solution through lab tests. We'll talk about it. Review feedback, develop your final product, get re regulatory approval, then validate the product and launch the product. Now, for a successful product marketing, For a successful product marketing, the products must create convenience. Please, whether it is product they eat or it is product they don't eat, it must create convenience. Okay, ah, okay. I can easily find it. Yes, I can easily find it. It's giving me satisfaction. I should be able to go to where I want to pick it and pick it there, ease of shopping. You should be able to provide all the necessary information that the consumers who need this product need to know about the product. Please, we are in the age of digitization. Do not throw away. It's even cheaper to go, you understand integrate technology into your production processes and marketing processes. And it also helps in your data pool too. Data collection, you cannot do it alone. You need to get tools, digital tools. Facebook is a good way to get it. Your, all your handles are good areas to get it. Set up a product account on Facebook get an opportunity to pull up an ad on Facebook. It's cheap, $5, $10, $2, you can get it done. It helps create and reach more audience for your product. Please be able to differentiate your product from the crowd. It's key. And you must be able to know where your customers are. It's very key. And you must be there is no way you can do without them, except you have your shop. 
all the retail outlets, you must know their needs. You must know what they want. You must be able to get to meet and get feedback from them. You don't need to do that. Your eyes in the field should be able to do that. And finally, when products are not available, customers go to other choices. Make sure that you are available at all times. You are always right where they can find you. You are always accepted at point of purchase and the price is good for you and people can easily find you in trade. Thank you. Thank you. Thank because you, sir. Time, I want us to, thank you. I want us to give it a shot uh, here. Th Feedback. Th 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 hello, hello, sir. I've been raising my hand. I have some questions I want to ask, sir. Fantastic. Go on, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the good submission. We really appreciate your your the experience and the the dexterity in a display, food processing, food packaging, distribution, marketing. You are only learning in terms of food. We do we appreciate your, your submission. You, now, Thank my you, question is, when you first started this lecture, you talk about all what is going in an audited box that is marketing. Yes, sir. And now, why you are not differentiating between sales and marketing? You said sales is putting the product on the shelf. Yes. That marketing is getting letting the product get to the most desired customer and uh, non-desired customer the people that customers should be able to see it and know that this yes, product is they good. must speak it they have to so now in that annotated box is there no element of sales at all beautiful question now I, I, I quickly said, after this, I said, sales is push. Marketing is what? Pull. So I am pushing into this trade. And marketing will help me pull it out of the trade into custom, consumers' houses. Are you with me? So the implication is sales and marketing. I said something. There can be no sales without marketing, and there can be no marketing without sales. I hope, do you remember I said that? Yes, I do remember. That's why I'm asking the question because you laid them fast. Yeah, back to your question. Every element, you see, what we, that's why I said, I'm not going to teach you textbook here. I'm teaching you real life scenario. I'm engaging you on real life scenario. The job of sales is to take the stock out of the processing plant, put it on the shelf put it in the store, put it in the warehouses, distributor warehouses. Are you with me? Yes. The job of marketing is to now help us create awareness. You understand? For people to know that this product is available, mind you, if you are creating awareness and there is no product, you know you have failed. And if there is product and you are not creating awareness, which is the marketing bit? You have failed. So that is why there is no way you mention marketing without sales. If I tell you my, my, my journey started as a salesman, I entered marketing. So marketing is an element that helps me, are you getting me, to drive that product out. Out, okay. Out of the warehouse, of the processing unit. Because the product cannot stay in the processing unit. The product cannot stay in the warehouse. It has to be consumed. Yes. Are you yes. with me? Yes, sir. A sales go, 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 he go, has go. a target. Okay. Okay, sir. Then another question, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. The second question. Hello. I'm with you. Then, you yeah. know, you talked about the yeah, creating yeah. awareness. Sir, you know, for a small scale business, you yes, are sir. planning to produce your product. Yes, All sir. these things that is cost attachment. How can we equalize at the, the planning stage to 
to be able to apportion this cost because the major problem is that it is when after the product is produced, then majority of entrepreneurs are thinking of, I need to create this my the, the, the marketing awareness, the marketing push, marketing pool, and all these things come with cost. And if the cost are not embedded in the planning stage, it, it eroded a lot of the, 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 the profit. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good question again. You know, I told you something while we were doing this, while we were having this webinar. I said, you should always put in mind that every of your cost elements, that was when I said, we're going to talk about A and P. We're going to talk about cost of goods sold. We can't do that in one day here. It's going to look like mathematics, but it's not mathematics. But what, 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 what you want to know at this point is how do we embed that cost? You have to embed your cost, your marketing cost, into your total cost during planning. You don't embed marketing cost after you have finished production. The question is, how much do I want to spend on marketing? Even if it is poster you want to make. If you want to make 500 posters and you put those posters in Mama Bosses outlet, bold posters, you understand? Bold posters. And you are putting it in 500 outlets. The poster is going to cost you probably maybe 20,000 naira. How do you, I always tell people, you don't take the cost of that marketing spend at once. How do you face the spending? Month one, I take 2,000. Month two, I take 2,000. So you are putting it in your cost. And as you are putting it in your cost, as you are starting production process, you are factoring the cost of A and P. We call it A and P element, advert and promotion element, into your costing. And at the end of the day, you will be able to say, okay, now that I have put all these cost elements in this, what margin will I put on this product? When I put the margin, will I be competitive versus other products in the market? If you are the market leader, then you don't need to worry. But if you are not the market leader, then you know you need to worry and follow the leader. So back to your question, how do we embed this cost? You have to embed the cost in your marketing planning cycle. A marketing planning cycle starts when you are conceptualizing the idea, you understand, of producing a product. Thank you very much. You can't just wake up and produce a product. You must have seen the need for that product before you produce it. It's either you see some people doing it and you say, let me follow the bandwagon. Or you see that there is need for it, and you sit down. Even if you are following bandwagon, you must sit down and do your homework. Because without marketing, your product will not move. And without sales, you won't get product on the shelf. Get what I said? Without sales, you will not get products on the shelf. Without marketing, your product will not move out of the shelf. Thank you very much. So you can employ a marketing manager. It says a marketing manager. But in multinational companies, sales manager is different, marketing manager is different, sales directors are different, marketing directors are different. But they do, they do complementary work. But I promise you, if we have an opportunity to spend some time together, we can sit down to do costing out to map cost to your product. Simple way to mark cost to your product. Factoring cogs, factoring all elements of depreciation, factoring A and P, and factoring some other elements. Because you bought a raw material for X Naira, you have machineries that you are amortizing, you are going to do marketing, am I right? And all those costs must come, and you build it over time so that you can be profitable and be competitive. Do I answer your concern? 
Hello, Mr. Luashe, do I answer your concern? Yes, absolutely, yes, sir. Yes, sir, you did, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then we are we are longing to have the second session where the cost element will be dealt with. Thank you very much, sir. That is, I would, I would love to do that because uh, I was a commercial planning manager for like four years in Guinness, Nigeria, and we don't joke with that. So everything that come out, all the products that come out must go through that rigor. And it's the same for everybody. Even if you are a one-band businessman, it's the same. If you are giving service, it's the same. It's not different. But many of us, we don't do that. We will have produced the product and will now be saying, we don't need to do that. If we do it and we are still more competitive, that we need to put more margin on our product. You get what I said? If we have done all the costing, we put margin that we want to put. And we still see that we are still more competitive in the market. We can decide to increase our margin and give more spending to marketing. Or we don't even give more spending to marketing. We make more money. That is how you make a break, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Any, any other question? Any other? Yes. Yes. Hello, sir. Thank you so much for You're most welcome, sir. this training. Okay. Any other feedback? My name is Alicia. Yes. I want to ask a question. It's not a training. No, it's a webinar. It's not a training. It's a webinar. We are all together. We are all learning. Yes. Hello. Hello. I'm with you. Go on. Go on. Go on. Please go ahead. Okay, my name is Alicia. My check. Yeah, my check. Can you go ahead? Thank you so much for this training. I want to ask a question. You told us that um, NAVDAC is going to stop people from using this plastic packaging. Please, um, I'm starting a, a new business packaging uh, what the vegetable known as Sokazi. Is a dehydrated yes, one that's a dried one and i tried to do it in such a way that you know it maintains the color the green color without you know being burnt. and uh, i am an environment environmentalist but, and i don't like this plastic is there any alternative for me to package this dry vegetable this dry leaf apart from the plastic bag thank you so much Thank you so very much. We have laminated packages now. We call them laminated packages. You know, you know, one good thing about this country is that the people who are making this legislation, some of them wants to cash out. I can tell you, if you don't, if you don't mind, I will while before I when I'm sending this, I will add some packaging. You must have gone to ShopRite lately, and you will see. The way people are packaging gary, packaging um vegetables now. Yes, uh, yes. You understand? Yes. And Okazi yes. is a wonderful one. Now the thing yes. is this, are they going to ban polythene out? Yes. We're not sure. But are they going to buy polythene to ban polythene in pure water production? You understand? <laughs> That's the question. They've not really come out to tell us that, you know, you understand what I'm saying? The, yes, the, yes, the, the major concern, you understand, the environmental health is inability for pure water nylon to degrade, for plastics to degrade. And this exactly. is being ascribed to water, 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 water. So I am not sure if we are going to ban polythene totally, one. Number two, we are having the innovations now around laminated packages that you would think is paper, but it's transparent. It gives you some level of transparency where you can see your product and yes. it protects your paper yes, and your yes. product. And it is resealable. Yes. We are in trade now. So, you can okay, you can look like, at that option like that one and two. How to get 
we'll, we'll look at we we'll look at doing that said ma but I'm, I'm happy you're coming up with a very fantastic solution to a product that yeah. people are even demanding outside the country yeah i want yes. to tell you kazi package your kazi is exportable yes. It's, it's yeah. even exportable. So yeah, it is. keep it up, man. We'll be able, they probably one day will be able to support you. Okay, that would be nice. Please, we'd like to have, you. have your phone number so that we can have a link with you and Thank continue you. to shake you with more questions. All right, man. The, the, I, while I send this, I, I shared my LinkedIn profile. I, at the same time, I also share my phone number. No problems. I need to take that permission from okay. um, Mr. Adebui. Okay. So he's going to, he, I'll, I'll be sending this, this presentation to him with all the information you have requested, and he'll be sharing it with everyone okay. of you. Okay, thank you. Thank we are very, very grateful to the organizers the, of this program. Keep up the good job. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other? Any other notes? Any other feedback? Please, I want to learn. Any other notes? Any other feedback? Hello. Hi. Yeah, well done, sir. Yeah, thank Mr. you for Peter. the. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay, well done. Thank you for the exposition this evening. Uh, my question or comment is on the side of competence of the sales force for the small businesses or the small establishments. What I see that is the major problem is that because of the financial constraints, the small businesses are not able to hire a qualified marketing and sales team. So uh, it becomes a very big problem when you are using a, a, I will take apology to say uneducated people to market your products and sell your products. So even to get the right data to make decisions might not be able to be you, they might not be able to collect such that data. So how do small businesses uh, build competence with the small resources they have without uh, breaking the bank and still uh, and are able to market their products appropriately? Very good question. Very good question. Um, your submission is right, but I want to correct you very quickly. Nobody is born a salesman. Nobody is trained a salesman. We all learn on the job. And I can tell you, there are some uneducated people. And I give it to people from your side who are better than some of us who have got the degrees, who have got the certification in sales, and they do fantastic engagement. Now, back to your question. The constraints around sourcing and getting a good sales hand is everywhere, I will tell you. You know very well that an average multinational company have the wherewithal, but how did they have the wherewithal? They build it into their into their cost, and that is why it's important to build everything into your cost from the onset. And you now take that cost, you now compare it with the cost outside. Are you with me? Because if you do not build your cost element, your now your the cost element you are talking about is recurrent expenses. That's expenses as it relates to salaries and wages. They are recurring. How do you build it? And that is why I said probably we have another time to sit around drawing up commercial planning as to how we look at costing, how we approach costing, and if we have 
margins to play with, you play with them. That's number one. Number two, back to how you can resource. I said before now that whenever you are starting a business, you need to look at the niche. First, carve a niche for yourself. This is the demography I want to play in. In this demography, what is the character, what are the characteristics, sorry, of my consumers? See, you can't take a Twitch person to go to a village where they don't understand English and the person doesn't understand their language to be talking to them. Sales is not necessarily a matter of PhD. It's, it's on its own an art. And it takes will. It takes will to do it. For you to resource, you can resource. I don't know how much you are paying, but I know some sales guys that they are paying 50,000 naira per month. But the question is, if I want to pay 50,000 naira per month to a salesman, will he or she be willing to go with this? And that is why I said, probably when next we meet, we have an opportunity, we'll, we'll do commercial planning. Commercial planning, we talk about your costing, how you play with it, how you build all your costs, your rent, your vehicle, your everything into your cost element. And the volume of product you can produce, you understand, to create a lasting margin. Because you can't be producing 100 packets of products per month and be expecting you to say you want to break even. So that will tell us what number of product do we have the capacity to produce that product. That will now help us to say, okay, for this, we will need so, so, so number of sales team. I don't need a sales manager now. I'll be my sales director, sales manager, marketing director, but I need a salesman or I need a sales executive to go to trade for me, bring in orders, identify people, bring in customer intelligence reports, market intelligence report. That's the job of the guy. I did an analysis for someone who is into pure water production too. And from the analysis, we discovered that the covered area that he is in, he does not need more than two people and one truck. And the man already had five trucks. Is he going to break even? Hello? Yes, sir, we are following. The man did not plan. The man did not plan, he bought five trucks. And the environment is going to cover, that truck can cover that environment, you understand. In peak period, are you with me? Once per week. In off peak period, when there is rain, he can do it 1.5 times per week. Now, you now ask me, once per week, his journey plan is every day he goes to this place. Day one goes to this route. Day two go to this route. Day three go to this route. Minimum supply is five. Because all the customers, the minimum that we had was seven. Then we use minimum supply five. That was when we discovered that the man can even employ two sales execs maintain one truck, you understand, save cost on fuel, save cost on maintenance, and he now asks, will I have to sell this truck? I said, don't sell them. Look at your capacity. Can your capacity create opportunity for two trucks to be working? No, he couldn't. So the money he should have invested in upscaling his capacity, he has invested the money in buying five trucks. Am I making sense now? So that's why it's important we need to do that simple arithmetic so that it will help us. But for you, I will tell you, you can still get a salesman. How do you do that? Build your course. What every month, what is my turnover? What is my cost? 
what's the cost to get raw material, cost to repay warehousing, cost to amortize my equipment. At the end of the day, how much do I have? Can I play with so 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 amount? What is the amount that I can play with? How many people can I give this to? Because you are not a multinational firm, so multinational firm will even pay eighty thousand naira to Sizzler, and they don't give them vehicle. Tell me. So I'm not saying that as long as what you are going to pay is above the minimum wage, you are good to go. They do not write anybody off as quack salesman or professional salesman. You can train those people, you understand, to the point of capability, or you bring them to an environment like this, we tutor them. And all they need is something to get them going. How do I create that boldness in trade? How do I execute in, in trade? How do I sell in trade? How do I do commercial talk in trade. You can't go to a customer's outlet. And when you get there, I say, money, madam, what do you have? That is not how to get your customers. There must be steps of the call. We call it steps of the call. Those are the things that we endear the customers to you to listen to you. It is not by using juju or anything. It's just a matter of practice. And when they know it, they run with it. Thank you.